Okay, so as I go through this, whatever I write down, you should be writing down unless you've already written it down when you did it the first time. Um, at the end of class, I'll go around and just check to make sure that you completed it. If you wrote down everything I wrote down, then you get full credit. Um, let's see. Okay. The first one, it says, actually, I found this purple pen. Actually, my husband found it for me, and I've been using it all day. <laughs> Why is it that colored pens make me happy? I don't know. Anybody else the same way? No. Nope. State the postulate that can be used to show each statement. Um, it says the planes J and K intersect at line M. So we look at this. Okay, here's plane J, and then we have plane K here, and they do intersect at line M. Um, the postulate that they're looking for is that two planes intersect at a line. So it is multiple choice, so there might be other answer choices like two planes intersect at a point, or two lines intersect at a point. Um, so you're just looking for the one that applies to that situation. Then number two, choose a property that justifies the following statement. It says x equals two, and x plus y equals three, then two plus y equals three. So they took the x equals two, they plugged in two for x, that would be substitution. Number three, choose a property that justifies the statement measure of angle A equals measure of angle A. That would be reflexive, reflexive property. And the next one, segment GH is congruent to FD, therefore FD is congruent to GH. That is symmetric. Okay, next um, we have this figure here. It says measure of angle one is three X plus 15 and measure of angle two is six X plus three, find X. Okay, looking at this figure, 3x plus 15 would be right here, and 6x plus 3 would be right here. 1 and 2 are vertical angles, therefore they are equal, and we can set those expressions equal to solve for x. Some of you probably already did this, yeah? So 12 equals 3x, so x equals quadro, equals 4. And next, number six, it gives us a figure as well. It says if measure of ABC is 34, find CVD. Well, we have to look at the picture to determine what the relationship is there. Um, when you identify this angle, just kind of connect the dots with those letters. ABC is talking about this angle here, and it's saying it's 34. And then angle CVD right here um, is complementary to that angle, and we can see that because they come together to form that 90 degree angle. So to find the other angle, 90 minus 34 equals 56 degrees, and that is our answer. Okay, now we are getting into the proofs. Um, you've seen these on your homework. If you kind of like guessed it out to figure it out, um, but you needed further explanation, here's your further explanation. Um, before we get into anything before you even look at it, always plug in what you know. You know you're given, and the given is angle one is congruent to angle three, and then the proof statement goes in the last box here. So before we get anywhere, we already know that that is accurate. Okay, so before we even looked at it, we got more than 50% correct, which is awesome. Now we need to look at what they gave us next. Angle three is equal to angle two. Why are they equal? Because they're vertical angles. So that's vertical angle theorem. And then the next part, it says one is equal to two. Well, if one is equal to three and three is equal to two, then one and two must be equal because of the transitive property. That specific proof, it's like everywhere with the vertical angles and then transitive. Next, this one I don't think you saw in your homework. If you get this one on the test, it will have answer choices that you can drag and drop. Um, as far as the given, of course, fill that in. We have A, B is congruent to D, E. B is midpoint A, C, and E is midpoint D, F. 
So we got that. Then I'm also going to fill in the proof statement. BC is congruent to EF. Okay, next. Um, I'm looking what they actually gave me. They said AB is congruent to DE. And they said that B is the midpoint here. So that means this is going to be equal to this. And this is going to be equal to this. Therefore, pretty much everything's equal. But let's see how they did the proof. Here they say AB is equal to DE. They told us it's congruent. Now they're saying it's equal. That's definition of congruence. Then the next reason is definition of midpoint. I know if B is a midpoint, then AB equals BC. B equals BC and DE equals EF. Next they say BC is equal to DE. Those are on two different parts of the thing. How did they get that? The only way they could have gotten that is substitution. I could sit there and figure out what they substituted, but honestly, it's probably not even worth my time. Um, next, it says BC equals EF. Again, I'm looking at that there. They had to have used substitution. If I really wanted to look at it, DE is equal to EF, so therefore they substituted EF here. So substitution. Last but not least, they said that they are congruent, so that's definition of congruence. Okay, um, of course start out with given, get as many filled in as, in as you can, A, B is congruent to C, D, and B, C is congruent to D, E. And then of course plug in your proof statement, E, C is congruent to A, C. Okay, now we get into the real stuff. Um, I'm just looking at what they told me here. AB is equal to CD and then BC is equal to DE. Okay, definition of congruent segments. Well, if these are congruent, then they are also equal in length. And then here it's saying A, B plus B, C equals the entire segment. That's segment addition postulate. I like that I'm hearing erasing because that means you actually like tried and now you're recognizing what your error would have been tomorrow if you did it tomorrow. Oh, well, if you're erasing, I'm proud of you. Then we have CD plus DE equals AC. Looking at this, CD and DE are over here, AC is over here. So the only way they got that is substitution. And then EC equals AC, again, substitution. And last but not least, they're taking equal, making it congruent, so definition of congruence. Thank you, next. Turn it on back. Okay, yes, I made front and back copies, which is a bit of a splurge, but I don't know how. <laughs> Do you want to write this all by hand? I don't think so. Okay, next, um, the given statement is much longer on this one, so just circle it and do an arrow. But don't do that for all of them, just that one. It says given, it already put the proof statement in there. Looking what the given says, C is a midpoint of AE, so those two are going to be the same length. C is a midpoint of this segment here. And they also tell us that this entire segment is the same length as this one. So that means all these little segments are the same measure. Um, the second statement, it says that AC equals CE. The reason why that would be true is definition of midpoint. And then it says AE equals BD. In the given statement, it said that AE and BD were congruent. Here it's saying they're equal, so that's definition of congruence. And then it says a segment addition postulate. That's the postulate that says that this part of the segment plus this part of the segment equals the whole segment. So I'm looking for something down here that matches that, and it's this one. Again, it might not fit very well. It's not going to fit very well. So 
Just do an arrow. No, you can't do arrows for all of them. Just the ones I do. And then after that, it says AC plus CE equals BC plus CD. Um, since AE equal BD and then these segments equaled AE and BD, they substituted. Substitution. And then again, they use substitution here as well. Then it says simplify, like what are they simplifying? They're combining like terms. So they're saying AC plus AC equals 2AC and CD plus CD equals 2CD. And then division property, divide both sides by 2, you get AC equals CD. And last but not least, they turn it into a congruence statement, so definition of congruence. And moving down on the page. Number four, one and two form a linear pair and one is congruent to three. So it's saying this is congruent to this. Prove that two and three are also supplementary. Okay, so first we need to plug in our given. Given, um, I'm gonna just circle and arrow this one because it's not gonna fit. And then our proof statement, angle two and angle three are supplementary. Okay, so we have our given um, that one and two form a linear pair, and then it says one and two are supplementary. Well, since they are a linear pair, they are supplementary because of the linear pair postulate. And then it says definition of supplementary angles. Well, definition of supplementary angles means that measure angle one plus measure angle two equals 180 degrees. Supplementary angles add to 180. And then we have angle one is equal to angle three. That was in our given, one is congruent to three, another saying they're equal, so that's definition of congruence. Then three plus two equals 180. How do they come up with that? Well, if one equals three, they just substituted that out for angle one in this equation. So that's substitution. And last but not least, two and three are now supplementary. That is definition of supplementary angles. So if they added to 180, then they must be supplementary. Next. Everybody's been writing really quickly today. Okay, another proof. Fill in your given. That's easy. Looking at what they have, L. K is congruent to NM, KJ congruent to MJ. Definition of congruent segments, well, if they're congruent, then they are equal in length. The next one's a bit of a jump. Unless I pointed it out to you, you might not, it, it's kind of hard to tell what it is. Um, you, with addition property, you can add the same thing to both sides of an equation and it's still equal. If these two things are equal, then you could add one of these to each side of the equation and it'd still be equal. So that's what they did. They said, okay, LK plus KJ must equal NM plus MJ. So that's addition property. But it is a bit of a jump. Then it says segment addition postulate. So I'm just looking for the one in the format of segment addition postulate. And that's what I found. Then here, LK plus KJ and NM plus MJ, which is right there. And then they said, okay, then LJ equals NJ. So a substitution. And then last but not least, definition of congruence. We're almost there. Okay, I'm moving up to the top of the page. 
Moving on up. Nobody's yelling at me. That's a good sign. Oh, they're already working on it, some people. Okay, I see you. Okay, I'm keeping up with them. Given, fill in your given. PA equals LN. Prove PL equals AN. And then reason, given. Great, we got it almost half right already. Next it says PL plus LA equals PA. That's segment addition postulate. And then we get LA plus AN equals LN. Again, segment addition postulate. Well, if PA equals LN, we have PA and LN right here, then we could say that this equals this. And that's what they did here. So they use substitution. You could maybe say it's transitive. It depends on what's in your answer bank, what you're gonna put. And last but not least, to get to that last statement, they subtracted LA from both sides and it made these cancel to just PL equals AN. So that's subtraction property. Okay, thank you, next. Okay, of course, fill and given. That's an easy, no brainer. One and two are complementary, two and three are complementary. Prove that one is equal to two, or congruent to two. Well, if one and three are complementary, it equals 90. Two and three are complementary, it equals 90. That is definition of complementary angles. Yes. Is that good? Zoom out a little bit, okay. Then, if these both equal 90, then you can set them equal to each other since they equal the same thing. And that's what they did. So substitution. And then it says reflexive property, which kind of feels like it's out of nowhere. I'm just looking at the answer choices. The only thing that makes sense would be measure of angle 3 equals measure of angle 3. And then for the next one, they get to measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 2. So they took this equation, they subtract measure of, subtracted measure of angle 3 from both sides to get this. So that is subtraction property. And last but not least, they wrote it as a congruence statement. So definition of congruence. Thank you. Next. Okay. Okay, um, of course, given, given, did some of you already finish this? You're awesome. Bisects, angle A, B, C, given angle two is congruent to angle three. Now what? Okay, B, D, bisects, angle A, B, C, so that means both of these angles are the same measure. Angle one equals angle two because of Definition of angle bisector. Then it says, okay, one and three are equal. Why are they equal? Vertical angle theorem. Vertical angle theorem. And last but not least, two is equal to three. Well, if one equals two and one equals three, then two and three must be equal. That is transitive. Prop. Dun, da, da, da. We done. Okay, um, so for the last 22 minutes of class, I'm gonna have you jump on a laptop, work on your Khan Academy. Um, while you're doing that, keep this out because I'm gonna come around and give you credit for it. Um, so go ahead and get a, a lap on a laptop, get on Khan Academy, get some of that done. Mm -hmm.